Okay, good evening everybody. Welcome to Darwin Aldridge Enterprise Studios virtual open evening. I understand that these are un unusual times and it feels very unusual to be talking to you through a live stream. Um, but I hope we can give you an insight this evening into what the studio, school and college is all about. I'd like to introduce the team first of all. My name's Colin Grant. I'm the principal of the studio, school and college. Mr. Berry. Hi, my name's Lee Berry. I am the assistant principal for behaviour and welfare. Hi, I'm Kay Brooks and I'm the vice principal of the studio school. Thanks very much. I think it's important that I start off with an overview of what the studio is all about. Um, we tie directly into the Northern Powerhouse movement. And by that, I mean the movement where the government, government pumps millions, and I mean millions of pounds, of investment into the northwest of England to generate the careers that are associated with creative digital medias, with computing and programming, and with the care sector. And if our school and college ties directly into the Northern Powerhouse movement, I feel it's really important that our curriculum reflects that. So when you look at the curriculum for the studio, you'll notice there's three distinct pathways. At Key Stage 4, they build upon English, Maths and Science. And at Key Stage 5, they're entirely specialist. And my colleagues will talk about that in a little moment. I think it's also important to recognise that while we're not selective, the students that we recruit always have an ambition to go in to some of those career sectors that we've mentioned in the creative, the computing or the care sector. What we do offer at the studio is real personalised learning. We're absolutely a mainstream school. We absolutely offer GCSEs and A-levels and equivalents. However, we can personalise learning in a way that very few other schools can. Our progression from college is really exciting, and you'll hear a little bit about that in a moment. What I am really pleased to be able to show to you this evening is a video piece that has been created by our students and by our staff. I hope it gives you a little bit of an insight into what a day in the life of the studio feels like. I'll hand over now to the video. The studio is mainstream education for young people aged 13 to 19. We specialise in three key sectors that tie into the Northern Powerhouse movement. Firstly, the creative industries, so graphic art, photography, TV and film production. Secondly, the computing industries, game design, web and app development, computer programming. And finally, the care sector, health and social care, childcare and citizenship. You can combine these three qualifications alongside core in English, Maths and Science at GCSE or specialise at level three courses. We're a very small and nurturing school. We look to take 50 students per year group. This enables us to be incredibly unique when you compare us to larger, more traditional settings. We can build relationships with young people. We get to know them as an individual and we bring back a little bit of what might have been experienced at a primary school. We all know each other and we can build a strong bond with those individuals. One of my favourite things about Studio is how inclusive it is. Studio feels like it's teaching you, not an entire classroom. So in here, it's as if you're in an actual workplace. Since I've come to the Studio school, I've become more confident in myself. It really feels like a family around the place. I think the options have really made a difference because the options that we have here, you won't really get in a normal, average high school. Doing the creative pathways like, is really fun because you really get a feel on how to use the things that you would be working on in industry and you get to really get a feel on how the skills work. It feels weird to like, be excited to go to school. Game inside of it, we play in things like tournaments. Uh, we get good at games, we learn how to do it, we get feedback from teachers, other players and see how we can improve. I'm from a big family and being in childcare and health and social, I've, it's made me want to achieve more goals and stuff and it's made me choose my career. The teachers are just amazing. I like citizenship because you get to learn about law and human rights and law to crime. The studio stood out more for me when I was looking for a college because of the opportunities you get. Your teachers are all professionals in that environment like you get to go and work on films with your teachers. We've got the film festival, 
where directors come and show the films. You get to ask them questions about like that industry and how to like get a career. I would like to thank DAE Studio Film Festival in beautiful Darwin, Lancashire for screening our film at their wonderful festival. We thrive on the fact that we know our career aspirations for our young people, that we know what makes them tick, and we can be there to offer support, to offer guidance, and most importantly, to offer praise for the amazing work that our students do. We really hoped you enjoyed having an insight into life at the studio school. And I just want to reiterate that that piece of footage has been created by our students in the school. I think it's really important that this evening we try and cover as many general questions that you might have uh, that you will be able to pose if you were coming around a real open evening and not a virtual one. And feel free to put any questions you might have that we don't cover this evening into the chat um, and as that comes up we'll be able to respond to those. I want to hand over now to Lee Berry to talk a little bit about Key Stage 4 in a little bit more detail and then to um, Kay Brooks to talk about Key Stage 5. Over to you Mr Berry. Thank you Colin. Um, sitting on, alongside our Maths English and sci Science offer is our creative pathway. This includes graphics, photography uh, and TV and film production. Then we move to the technical pathway which is computer programming, game design, web app and development. Then we have our care pathway which includes health and social, uh, childcare and citizenship. We offer a real personalised touch, um, individual learning, um, hitting the ground running, that's really important, making sure our students are ready for that next step in their careers. And for me, the focus really is our, on our pastoral offer within our coaching hub, making sure we can offer students a light touch should they need it with their day-to-day um, school experiences and more um, progressive support within the school on a day-to-day -day basis, again, should they need it on the top floor with our pastoral team. Thank you, Colin. Cheers. Um, Miss Brooks, could you talk us through the Key Stage 5 pathway? Yes, I can. Uh, Key Stage 5 in sixth form follows the same specialisms as in Key Stage 4. The care sector, we have students there studying health and social care and child care, and that attracts students that want to go into nursing, into primary teaching. There's a variety of careers in the NHS as well that uh, students tend to follow when they leave us. We have the IT pathway, which is IT, business as well, and this time, this year, eSports has been introduced. This is for students who want to go into jobs into IT, if they want to go into games design, uh, into the service sector, if you want to own your own business, and there's thousands of management training programs out there as well for students to join after that. The final pathway is our creative pathway. We've got photography, graphics, and then students can choose either film and TV or game design. This is for students who want to go into film and TV in any capacity whatsoever. Anyone that wants to be a photographer, a web designer, a games designer, and obviously if anyone wants a career in esports, uh, sorry, a career in game design. Um, the great thing about our sixth form is we've got very small classes. All our teachers are industry specialists. They've all worked in the industry in which they teach that subject, which means that it's real life learning. We offer a variety of work experiences. We try to cater to all the students' needs to make them that little bit special, to make them stand out from the others when they go for university interviews, when they go for job interviews. We prepare students really well for university applications and for the interviews there and also for apprenticeships. So when they go out, it's not just the case that they've got the qualifications, they've got the right demeanour, they've got the right social skills, and they sound good and they look good. This year, 64% of our students that applied to university got unconditional offers, which is really unusual. It means that at interview, when they met the, the people that ran the courses, they were so impressed, they wanted to take our students regardless of what their outcomes were, which is a really good position to be in. Uh, all our students went on to do something, whether it was an apprenticeship, to start their own career path, to start their own business, one of the students, and most of them went to university. 
Thank you very much, Kay. Um, I just want to touch a little bit on the fact that by the nature of our specialisms, we attract a very diverse cohort. In no means are we selective, but it is important that we get the right people doing the right courses. Inevitably, because of our specialisms, we have a really niche cohort. And I'm trying to put it in the most politically correct way um, that our creative students are incredibly funky. They've got crazy coloured hair and nose piercings and see the creative opportunities in everything. Our computer students inevitably play Minecraft and Fortnite and don't leave the bedroom very often. Mm -hmm. And our care sector students are predominantly stroppy girls. So we know our cohort incredibly well. And we work with our students to give them a level of professionalism and a level of opportunities that you've heard my colleagues talk about, which creates what we call the competitive advantage. We want young people who can leave our school and college with a good set of qualifications. That gets them the interview. However, what gets them the job is being able to walk into an interview, look someone in the eye, shake them by the hand, hold a conversation, and talk about the experiences they've already had linked to that career pathway. That is the ultimate ambition for us as a school and college, to enable our young people to achieve their dreams and their careers, have those aspirations, and achieve employment which they're excited and keen and eager to get up every day and be involved in. Now, there's a few things as well that make us different, which I know people will be asking questions about if it was a, an open evening walking around the school. Dress code is always a question that we're asked about. And we pride ourselves on professionalism. Key stage five college students dress down. They can come in their own clothes. They've earned the right to do that by passing their GCSEs and displaying the professionalism it means to do that. Our key stage four students have the potential to dress individually with regards to their shirt of any color that they choose. Blue, black, pink, purple, white, I don't mind, as long as it looks smart. And it takes a black studio tie. No jeans, no tracksuits, and black footwear. We don't want anything that identifies our students as being in different year groups. They're all on the same year learning journey for Key Stage 4, and I think it's important that they have the same sense of dress. Now, I do want to talk about the application process. And I can see we've got quite a few questions to go through that have been put forward to us. Um, but first of all, the application process um, is pretty straightforward. If you want to place at the studio school and you want to study our specialisms, there's a link on the website to applications. If you are currently in year eight, wanting to join in year nine, you fill out a year nine application form. And if you're currently a year 11, wishing to join us in year 12, you fill out one of the six form application forms. When we receive your application, that triggers us to get in touch with you. We will invite you in for an interview. And please don't worry, it will be very informal. And this is the opportunity for us to get to know you as an individual, for you to talk to us about your career ambitions, and for us to make sure we can get you on the right curriculum pathway. Class sizes, we always want our class sizes to be small. Sizes of 20 is what we aim for. And with a cohort of 50 per year group, it gives us 250 students in our college. And that means we can still personalise. Competition this year has been really competitive for places and I urge people to get an application form in quite swiftly. We are in a position of having a waiting list for our current year nine as we're at capacity and we anticipate that to be the same for September. So we do encourage applications as soon as possible. Now, I think it's probably useful if I touch on a couple of the, the questions that we've been posed tonight. Um, someone's asked us what's so unique about the studio schools curriculum and specialisms I think we've touched on that quite a bit tonight. What I do want to emphasise is something that Kay Brooks mentioned about the tuition in our specialisms. We're really proud to have members of staff who come from an industry standard background. Our film teacher still is a film director, graphic designers who are practising graphic designers, care sector uh, teachers who've worked for 10 years in nursing. And that's true across the board for all of our specialist areas. Really want to emphasise that it's different. Being taught by a teacher who's actually been in that real world, who can talk about the employment skills that you will need. Passing qualifications is one thing, but being ready for the world of work is something completely different. Linked to that is a question about how much time do our students get. So at Key Stage 4, um, our students get three hours per week per specialism. So that gives you nine hours of specialist curriculum time. And you can imagine the skill set that our young people have at the end of year 11 or even better, at the end of year 13, when they've been able to study those specialist areas to the level of depth that we can enable. 
Um, you'll see from our curriculum offer that we don't offer humanities and modern foreign languages. English, maths, science, and three specialisms gives our students the eight qualifications at GCSE level to move through to any college setting, hopefully ours. At the end of sixth form, experience six hours a week on each specialist area, you know, gives our students such a competitive advantage and skill set. That university options, as Miss Brooks has said, apprenticeship pathways, uh, straight into employment are all key opportunities. A uh, question has been asked about what progress do students make at the studio school? And again, we've touched on that a little bit about progression and where our students go on to. Um, I'm really proud of the outcomes that our students achieve. And if I can give an example of photography, um, where our students are significantly above the national average for qualifications in that area. And we anticipate this year 100% pass rate in those specialist areas. Our sixth form has similar measures of 100% pass rate with our students going on to a range of outcomes as we've heard from Ms Brooks already. I've already mentioned the key points that students join. Um, we're looking to be talking at the moment to students in year eight to join us in year nine and to students who are currently in year 11 looking to join us in sixth form. Ms Brooks, do you want to talk about the entry criteria? We've got a question about what is the entry criteria for sixth form? Yes, for sixth form, we're looking at students having five GCSEs or grade four or above and we include in that uh, BTEC level two qualifications that are passed. We do sometimes find that students are absolutely outstanding in their specialisms and maybe they need the opportunity to reset a maths or an English qualification, which we can also do. But the majority of our qualifications are level three, so that's why we ask for quite high standards on entry. Thank you, Miss. I've got a question, Mr Berry, which you're probably the best to, to answer. Um, how do staff support students more at the studio school? I think the first thing for me is the smaller class sizes. Um, that promotes a more family orientated feel within our building. Um, I think that you have access to your teachers on a one-to-one -one much more than you would do in a mainstream setting. I think the coaching hub has become the heartbeat of the school. Um, we've created a unique uh, space on the top floor where we've got a, a number of staff from a number of professional backgrounds who spend an immense amount of time supporting and nurturing young people through that transition phase. And again, as I said before, sometimes just giving that a very light touch in terms of support, sometimes it does require more intensive day-to-day -day support, but students throughout the building know that whatever staff member they have access to, they have got that familiar face, um, and they have that relationship, the strength of the relationships with those staff to support them with whatever issues they present in school. Thanks, sir. Um, one really good question that was emailed through earlier um, was around what the studio school is all about. And a question that is it a naughty school uh, which made me chuckle and on the website you'll see we've actually got a page on the website that says myths about the studio school we do not look like a school from outside you know we have a wonderful old building one of the oldest buildings in darwin that we spent four and a half million pounds renovating and extending and designing to be a custom for our specialist subjects because we don't look like a school people jump to conclusions um, people think that we are not a mainstream setting we absolutely are People think that we might be a referral unit, we're absolutely not. People think that we're a private school and there's a fee for joining our school. That's not correct. We are a mainstream school that specializes. And the difference is, is that we are small. And within that school and college environment, we by design don't look like a school. We don't feel like a school. And I do say to anyone that visits, we don't even smell like a school. And um, it is absolutely genuinely all by design to get the right young people doing the right courses and give them the facilities that feel like a workplace. And again, from the video that you've seen today, I hope that environment that it's been filmed in gives you a good representation um, of the facilities our students can work in. One final question, which I think will probably cover um, the questions around equipment. So what can our students expect equipment wise at the studio school? We're really keen to give our students that experience of professional equipment. Within the game design sector and the computing pathway, we're really pleased with the facilities that we can offer our students. Uh, we have cutting edge computing facilities that facilitate the gaming aspects, um, and we have a wealth of opportunities for our young people to learn everything on that computing pathway with the equipment from stripping down computers, looking at the internal components, uh, documenting um, those different aspects, re-imaging machines, putting them back together again. And we really do 
foster that creativity that our computing students have. Within the creative sectors, we've got a wealth of facilities for our young people when it comes to design and editing. We work on um, suites of Apple Macs, and we insist that our students use the industry standard software. And we teach them Photoshop, uh, Adobe uh, Suite throughout, uh, with a particular focus on Illustrator in the graphic design. Within the filmmaking, um, we have access to a wonderful TV studio that we're sat in this evening, um, with industry standard equipment, cameras that you would find in the BBC studios, but also in post-production, we pride ourselves on our students using software like Final Cut Pro and making sure they've got that industry standard experience. Alongside that comes the professionals that they work with. And I've spoke before about that industry st uh, standard expectations. And we really do try and get that across to our students on all levels. I think the final thing for me to cover really um, is just around those final opportunities that our young people who join the studios to go get. And I hope it comes across as a very genuine, heartfelt message when we say we absolutely want the best for our young people. And part of that is being an inclusive environment, but thriving on that communication with parents. I think I said in the video, we bring back a little bit of what that experience at primary school was. We have really strong links with home. We know our individual students um, and their career aspirations. And we absolutely go that additional mile to support our young people in every aspect of their education. If you've got any further questions this evening, feel free to put them in the chat. Feel free to, to email them through the info um, address on our website. And if you are keen to put an application in, can I urge you to do so um, quite quickly? And then I can start to meet you guys and have conversations on an individual basis. And we really do look forward to having those opportunities to meet you as soon as it's safe to do so and resume our normal open evening activities. But for now, if you've got any further questions, please email it through to us and I look forward to speaking to you as individuals. Thanks very much for joining us this evening.